My name is Dr. Ed Prysdale. I'm a Canadian Blood Services Scientist and faculty member with Centre for Blood Research, clinical professor at University of British Columbia in pathology and laboratory medicine. There's a huge literature starting 30 years ago or longer linking many different types of viruses to heart disease, both atherosclerosis and thrombosis. All of these viruses that we're concerned with have a common structure and that is called an envelope. That envelope is derived from the host cell membrane and within that membrane are both host proteins and virus encoded proteins. We're focusing primarily on one or two host encoded proteins. And so what we're looking at really is a very general mechanism that all of these viruses might use in order to gain access to host cells and trigger a thrombotic and subsequently an atherosclerotic mechanism, mm -hmm. especially if they infect the vasculature. That's how our work is linked to cardiovascular disease. The virus would utilize these host proteins that would normally participate in physiological processes to protect the body from vascular leakage and bleeding. These normal mechanisms would help the virus get into the cell. These viruses would trigger these mechanisms on the molecular level and enable the virus to enter the cell and to replicate, causing the cell to make changes. Those changes would then trigger vascular damage. And this is how the, we think that the virus may be contributing to vascular disease in the long run. There have been many links to cardiovascular disease attributed to viruses. One has been restenosis after coronary angioplasty linked to cytomegalovirus. Another has been a two-fold enhancement uh, linked to uh, death attributed to coronary vascular disease and after heart attack linked to herpes simplex virus type 1, which is the common cold sore virus. There have been many other examples with these very common viruses that almost everybody has by the time they're about 60 years old. How we can use this knowledge to improve patient care is that we can start to ask the question, can we predict who is susceptible to virus infection by understanding if an individual is more prone to vascular disease, they may also be more prone to virus infection. The flip side of that coin is that if they are less susceptible to a disease called thrombosis, they may be less susceptible to virus infection. So we can start making educated guesses about who may be more or less susceptible to those processes. We can also use these new molecular mechanisms we have discovered in order to target novel therapeutic development, which we've already started to do. The implications of these findings are that we should be giving a lot, paying a lot more attention to virus infection as a risk factor or as a combined risk factor to cardiovascular disease. Uh, at the, the moment, when evaluated alone, they are a very weak risk factor. But certainly the evidence suggests that, it, especially published evidence suggests that when combined with other risk factors, they are become a much stronger risk. And we should be considering this. Yes, certainly, especially in the case of, especially in the case of individuals who have been immunocompromised. And this is a very large population consisting of uh, people who are undergoing transplantation and an even larger population of newborns whose immune system hasn't been properly uh, generated or HIV people. These are the people who are especially susceptible to, to uh, these types of virus infections and these are the people who are going to be especially susceptible to uh, the conditions, ideal conditions in which these viruses may trigger these thrombotic episodes or these vascular disease periods.